started here trying to pick it up on my monitor again. Let's see if I can see it on here real quick. Thank you for joining us. We're going to be getting started here in just a second. You guys have a little bit of, uh, let me know if you have some volume, I haven't seen it yet, you see it on there? See if we can get a little bit of a thumbs up on some sounds. Everything sounds good. We'll make sure we got a couple here. All righty. Sounds good. Well, if you can hear me pretty good, I got a couple fans on in here in the office. It's kind of hot throughout the day. But uh, we're real excited that you can join us tonight. I'm going to go ahead. We've got quite a few people on here, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this music down. It's always good to have a little bit of worship music as you get started, uh, to minister the word and to have a service. So, all right, great. Well, I see some people jumping on. We'll give them just a minute. I'll kind of ramble on here before we pray and get started. Uh, what a blessing it is to come to you. Uh, we're coming to you this evening on Memorial Day weekend, and it is uh, Saturday night. So if you've been following the ministry, Western Harvest Ministry, you'll, uh, you'll know that this is our seventh or eighth week. Uh, we've been able to do our services on Sunday. So we've got a very important thing that we were uh, invited to go to tomorrow. So we thought, well, hey, we want to do it on Saturday night. So one of the things you can do to help us, folks, is after we uh, tape this tonight, I'll uh, repost the link, and maybe you can share that in the morning. Uh, on its normal time uh, we usually do things around 11 o'clock so uh, what a what a blessing it is to be with you tonight I'm coming to you from our offices here in Weatherford Texas again I'm Scott Mendes executive director of Western Harvest Ministries uh, we are an outreach ministry uh, generally we travel the nation working at youth uh, functions public forums things of that nature but just like you whenever this uh, stay-at-home orders uh, hit our country we were able to use some of the technology here uh, to come into your home so we're greatly appreciative of being able to share an encouraging word of God each week with you so uh, it's very exciting so anyway Saturday night um, maybe there'll be some more people that'll jump on we ask you to share it if you can I'm excited being that it is Memorial Day weekend uh, man I, I just really feel uh, kind of a stirring in my spirit. Uh, this will be a, a great message. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, I want to, uh, as we get ready to pray, I want to make sure that uh, we understand what this weekend is all about. And, uh, and so I think that's important. But I also want to take the opportunity uh, to be able to minister to you. So anyway, having said that, I'll give you a little bit more information. We usually run our messages about 30 to 45 minutes. And we'll do our best as, as uh, just kind of allow the Holy Spirit to stop us uh, where we need to be. So having said that, I want to get right into this. Let's go ahead and pray. Again, thank you so much for joining us and for being with us on this Saturday evening on Memorial Day weekend. Let's go ahead and pray. 
Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day, Lord. We will rejoice and be glad. Father, we thank you that we still live, even though we have uh, restrictions and things over our life, we still live in a country that's free, Father. And I thank you, Lord God, for all the men and the women that served our country uh, to make this country strong for what it is. I thank you, Lord God, for sending your son that played an ultimate part and an ultimate sacrifice of giving his life that we may be free, Father. And I thank you, Lord, as we minister uh, over this broadcast the next little bit, Lord, that you would be glorified, that you would be exalted. Lord, that you would minister to the people's hearts that are watching this. Father, I thank you that people will watch this, not even knowing how or why they stumbled onto this. But, Lord, it will bless them. It will encourage them. Something that you say through me, Father, just let it go out there and, and bless the people, Father. We are so humbled to be in your presence today, Father. Thank you again for our country. Thank you for our Constitution. Thank you for our freedom in Christ Jesus. Lord, we love you, and we ask that uh, this service be honoring to you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Well, praise God. We're so excited that you could be with us tonight, and uh, we've got uh, a great word to share with you. And uh, just having said that, I want to get right into it. I was able to, uh, to type up and prepare a few things throughout the week, uh, but it's exciting. Uh, God is a good God, and, and I just want to tell you that no matter where you're at right now, no matter what the holiday may be, uh, no matter what the circumstances you may be, at the end of this message, uh, your life could be totally different, totally and radically changed. Because that's what God is. God is in the business of changing hearts. He loves His people. Now, as I minister this message today, you'll, 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 you'll kind of, I think you'll pick up on how I want to parallel this to the weekend. But I just want to say, you know, that God doesn't send the enemy uh, to, to try to reel us in and to try to teach us certain things. But I tell you that God allows the enemy sometimes to come against and to challenge uh, the, the, his children but it's all in the in the lines of developing character and strengthening us and so as I minister this I just want to say there's been so many people uh, in, in our country that have given so much and done so much for our country we wouldn't even uh, be able to, to be where we're at to have the freedoms to have the liberties and I do want to challenge us to make sure that we understand um, how important it is for us to, to, to be believing right, to believe uh, the way that God wants us to believe and to follow His Word. Amen. God is good. I just want to read this just a little bit. Sometimes I'm not the best in uh, full recognition of holidays, but uh, Memorial Day is a time to honor those who have served and have uh, served in the military. It is also a day to remember those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice of our freedom. Uh, in, in giving their lives, when we celebrate Memorial Day, it doesn't mean that we are guaranteed. Uh, we are agreeing with our government's decisions and wars, but that we are talking, taking the time to recognize those who uh, were willing to protect us. And so, as we get ready to move on, I just want to take a moment to thank everybody that has served in our armed forces. And, uh, you know, more importantly, just serving for the greater good, which is for the good of our country. Maybe that is in government or in politics. There's a lot of things that, uh, that people serve in that are very important. And sometimes the most important parts go unrecognized. But um, we thank you for that service. If you've lost loved ones in the war, I had an uncle that uh, was killed in the Air Force. I had a grandfather that fought in World War II on the Mendes side of my family. And... Uh, Man, I, I can just always remember uh, growing up and learning about what they did, and, and it was amazing uh, of how they were so selfless to give uh, you know, their life and their time and, and, and their dreams and what they wanted to do uh, just for the sake of our country. So uh, it's an exciting weekend. We honor all of those out there that have done that. Thank you sincerely from the bottom of our hearts. Um, I was a professional athlete. I got to live a dream. I couldn't have never been able to do that if it wasn't for living in a free country. So having said that, and we recognize what this weekend, I, I, I pulled some scriptures together that I think are very uh, 
fitting for Memorial Weekend. I just want to read three or four of these before we get into uh, our text and, our, and, our, and our, our theme of what we want to talk about. Psalms 34, 18 says this, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and He saves those who are of a crushed, crushed in spirit. So that's a, good, that's a good passage to see that God is close to those that are hurting. Jesus said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so He's with those, and He certainly knows how to, how to bless you and how to be with those, your loved ones uh, that are left behind and so forth. Psalms 27, verses 3 and 4 says this, Though an army brigades me, my heart will not fear. Through war, uh, though war break out against me, even then I will be uh, confident. So these scriptures give us confidence that God knows uh, what it means to serve our country, to be in a, a battle. For many of you that read the Word of God, you know that we are in a daily, we are in a spiritual battle, good versus evil. Evil being the enemy, the adversary, Satan. Call him what you want, uh, Prince of the Air. You'll read the scriptures. He's got multiple names, but it's the same uh, individual. And then, of course, we know Christ Jesus as good and God and loving, compassionate and all-knowing, omnipresent, all those things. Verse 4 says this in Psalms 27, One thing I ask of the Lord is only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in the temple. So we're wanting to be with the Lord. These scriptures are just some that I felt were important to read before we get into today's study. But they are uh, very encouraging to know that God is close to us that God has a plan for us and that God understands the sacrifice, not only the ultimate sacrifice of His Son, but that of, of those that serve this country. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 13 says this, Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave and be strong. So to be strong, to be brave, to stand fast in the faith. These are descriptions, in my opinion, of what it would take to be a man or a woman that served in our country, to be recognized on this Memorial Day weekend. We give you honor for that. Romans 13 and verse 7 says this, Render therefore to all their dues, and taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whom customs, and fear to whom fear, and honor to whom honor is due. So we know that Lord, the Lord was saying, give unto Caesar what is Caesar's. But he's also talking about giving honor to who honor is due. And so again, if you have a servant's heart, you've served your country, you've served the military, you have paved the way for those of us that live today to have the ability to live our dreams, to serve our country, and to pass that baton to this generation. We thank you. And, and again, we honor you for doing so. Proverbs 10 and verse 7 says this, The memory of the righteous is blessed. The things that they did in war, in battle, in our country are blessed. And they come to our memory because it was a righteous service. But the name of the wicked will rot. Man, the Lord's word is so powerful that even though we're talking about the centuries that have been uh, coming to the point that we live in now, we read the Word of God, and God has always been a God of honor and, and sacrifice and giving, uh, giving to those and recognizing to those that have served when we read the, this Word on these scriptures. Very powerful. John 14 and verse 27. This was a foundational scripture a few weeks back. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give it to you. And let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Man, can you imagine what it would have took to jump off those boats in the shore of Normandy's and those air attacks and World War I and even the, the, the Spanish flu of those days. It, it's just incredible to me the spirit of the human being but also of an American. And on this weekend, it's easy preaching because as you see what's going on and where we live and how we live, we must pass that, that knowledge and that wisdom down to our next generation 
so that we can always remember that where we're at, somebody has paid that price. Amen. Second Timothy 2 verses 3 says this, says, You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. See, isn't it awesome to understand that we are in a war and that we are in, we are in a, a God's army? That he even sees the way that we grow spiritually can be compared to or paralleled with the positions of even uh, soldiers uh, in an army. Because as we grow, we come into the things of God, we come in as a private. But then when we go through all this challenges and persecution, and as I was saying before, the enemy being allowed to tempt us and to try us, then we come out on the other side with medals on our chest. We, become out, we come out with scars on the other side of our life, and those scars are memories for the battles that couldn't kill us. Amen? God is a good God. I love that. God is... God is a God that when He says it, He means it, and, and, and we live by it. That's the whole purpose of being a man of God, is to read that word for application to make us better and to make us stronger. For time's sake, I need to hurry, but Proverbs 14 says this, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to all people. So we have a choice as a nation or as an individual to be one that is exalted unto righteousness or we can be reproved or reproached under our sins and to be judged. So no matter where we're at or what your, what your beliefs are, uh, a lot of the times you can parallel that with scripture. And I always say this and I want to just throw this out for a nugget for wherever you are today. When I find myself struggling and putting myself into the word of God, if there's a problem, I know it's with my own heart, it's with my own mind, it's with my own desires of my flesh. God is pure, He is perfect, His Son, what His Son lived in exemplified life, all those things are for us to live in victory. Amen? God truly wants us to live and to be strong uh, in Christ Jesus. Amen? God is good. So again, on Memorial Weekend, we're just so thankful that we have a country if you look at our circumstances of, of, of what we're going through right now, I would say that it is vitally important not only to remember those that have paved the way and to serve and gave their all, but that we would take ownership of the situation that we're in and that we would begin to claim and to operate the way God wants us to operate in His Word. Amen? And uh, again, I know that as I minister this today, there's going to... Uh, there's, there is a little parallel between what I want to talk about and this holiday weekend. No matter when you're watching this, whether you watch this in the morning or you're catching it live tonight. But I want to talk to us about the authority that we have as believers, as Christians, as children of God. Because that authority that was given to us is very similar to the lifestyle and the country that we have that was fought and that was fought for by our ancestors by our relatives and by their ancestors and their relatives for generations and generations when they fought and they stood on what they believed it enables us today to have a foundation in which we can live our life on and so as I looked at what I wanted to talk about uh, today I really thought that it would be a, easy to minister on the authority that you and I have as Christians. You see, we must understand, we, have, we must have an understanding of who we are in Christ. That is very important that we understand who we are in Christ. The authority of the believer belongs to every Christian. The devil doesn't want us to learn of their authority. You see, this is when it gets kind of challenging is because we have an authority and the worst thing is, is for the enemy, he wants to pervert it, he wants to distort it, he wants to convince you that you don't have power to walk in victory, that you aren't, that you don't discover you are what Christ says you are. What does Christ say that you are? You are more than a conqueror. You are blessed. You're the head and you're not the tail. Amen? Listen to this. If, if Christians do not know who they are, what they belong to, what belongs to them, it will not do them any good. 
So here's where we see the enemy, the deceiver, stepping in to confuse, to distract, to delay, to hinder you from understanding what you already possess and what you have in your salvation, in your relationship, or in your covenant with God. God did not set you in the game of life, and He did not full, that He did not fully give you the equip the equipping that you need and the tools that you need to be victorious. Listen to Hosanna four Hosea four six says this: My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge, because you have rejected knowledge. I also will reject you from being uh, from being uh, priest for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. Now, God is just talking about the, the, uh, the destroyed for the lack of knowledge. We have the knowledge of God's word right here in our lap, wherever you are. We have the ability to go to God's word and to study God's word, to give us wisdom, to give us discernment, and to give us an understanding. And then, and only then, do we have the authority that we need to overcome the enemy and that was the parallel that I wanted to talk about as I talk about the authority as, that you have as a child of God is the same authority that we have in our country but we must stand up we must believe in it we must fight for it and we must not be willing to back down and to compromise uh, certain things in our life that we believe in and it's the same way with God when Jesus died on that cross he made provision that his children would have the ability to overcome the enemy. And that is why we study the Word of God. We don't just study the Word of God to have a degree on the office, to make ourselves feel that we're smarter of the Scripture than the other person going down the road. It's not like that. We study the Scriptures as if a soldier using a bayonet or a sword in battle because it has a purpose in which how to use that. And when we use it, then we are victorious. Amen. Listen to this. John 8, verses 31 and 32 says this. Then Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. There's that word. If you choose with your free will to abide in him, uh, then you are uh, my, abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So that's what I wanted to share with you tonight is. The truth of the matter is that when you understand what God has made provision for you in your life, your job is not to allow the enemy to deceive you, to distort, to hinder you from understanding exactly what that authority is. Amen? And when we walk in authority and a covenant and an agreement with God, God moves heaven and earth. Not because we're so perfect and we're so strong and bold, but because he's already confirmed it and he sealed it and he signed it in his word. Amen. God's, God is the word. Amen. That's important. That's for another, another teaching. What is authority? Authority is delegated power. Now, you, it's not just power that you come up with. It's delegated. And so if I draw my power from God as a Christian, it would also be true that somebody that gives attention to the enemy, Satan or the devil, they could also have a form of power that would be delegated to them. Amen? See, that's the thing about preaching sometimes. Is we always preach about what we want to hear, but we don't hear the other side of that message. And so as the authority comes from delegated power, I want to receive that delegated power from my Heavenly Father. Why? Because I long to serve Him. I long to worship Him. And I long to walk with him. Amen. So authority is delegated power. God himself is the power behind our authority. The devil has his forces and are obligated to recognize. They're not. They are obligated to recognize our authority. You see, I want to say this. When Jesus died on that cross, he went to that grave and he ascended. We'll read that scripture in a minute. Then he broke the sin and the penalties of death and hell and sickness. And so because God owned that authority and he got it back into his possession, he's now enabled us to overcome the enemy. But we must fight. We live in a fallen world. We live in the flesh and the flesh has its own desires. 
its own passion and its own lust. So when we're in that spiritual battle, we need to have that authority and to recognize who we're fighting and what we're fighting against. Amen? And when you fight with God's Word and you fight with a pure heart and you fight in humility and you fight confidently knowing who you are, that His authority has been delegated to you, you can take and make sure that the enemy is pushed back and that he cannot overcome your family, your finances, or any of those areas. Amen? Let's move on. The believer who thoroughly understands this can exercise his authority and face the enemy fearless. That's what I wanted for this weekend, is to say we all know that we're in a battle with our country, with our family, with our jobs. And we also know that God is overseeing. He sees where his children are in in the matter of the circumstances that we're in. But it's time for you and I to rise up and to say, you know what? I'm going to push back on the enemy. I'm not going to be lied to. I'm going to have the helmet of salvation on. I'm going to have the breastplate of righteousness. I'm going to speak the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And I'm going to push back on the enemy. And I'm not going to allow him to depress me. I'm not going to allow him to keep me held in the chains of, of bondage. And to tell me I don't have these things based on fear. I'm going to rise up with wisdom. I'm going to understand what my covenant with Christ Jesus is all about. And then I'm going to get into the game. And I'm going to, I'm going to do what God has commissioned me to do. Amen? So God himself uh, has the power. We talked about that. What, what, what we're basically saying there is that the enemy has to recognize the power that God has given his children. That's why he's always coming to nip at the heels of the believer to try to trip you up and to find you in a place of weakness. So let's look at 1 Peter uh, about uh, confidently approaching the enemy. 1 Peter 5 verses 8 and 9 says this, Be sober, sober and be vigilant because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by the brotherhood in the world. So God is telling us in His Word is to be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary seeketh like a roaring lion of whom he may devour. If you believe the Word, that tells you right there, there is an enemy. And that enemy is trying to do all these things to come against us, but God has given us the ability to be greater than Him. Ephesians 6.10 Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Amen. Move on to a couple things. Our authority comes from Jesus. Matthew 28 and verse 18 says this, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Isn't it important for us to be in a relationship to be in agreement with God the Father. It is so important that we understand the very things that we desire in our heart. There is a process. There is a way through the Word of God that we can win and we can be successful. But there's a way that the enemy tries to hinder us and to try to knock us off course. Amen? You see, when the church, when Christ ascended, uh, ascended He transformed His authority to the church so when Jesus overcame the enemy by what he did as his ultimate sacrifice just like our soldiers that are serving in war that we can be free and and so when he did that he gave his authority to the church now let's read Ephesians 4 a couple verses here Ephesians 4 verses 7 through 10 this is talking about how God Jesus gave his authority to his children, to the church, after that awesome time uh, that he did that. So verse 7 of Ephesians 4, it says, But to each one of us grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he held, he was led, uh, held captive, and grave gave gifts to men so he ascended and he was held captive and he gave gifts to men verse 9 says now this he ascended what does it mean that he uh, that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth 
He who descended is also the one who ascended far above the heavens that he might fill all things. So depending on how you read that, and I encourage you to read these if you can mark these down or watch this video a couple times. In Ephesians 4, we read all that to say that when Jesus overcame the enemy, he gave his authority and his power from descending and winning and ascending back into heaven to us, the church, the children of God. Amen? So it's very important that we understand that. When we realize that the authority that belongs to Christ also belongs to us. When we realize, you and I, when we realize that the authority that belongs to Christ also belongs to us and to our lives, it, it, it can revolutionize your life to have that understanding. And, and I want to just say this with time allotted, but a lot of times what happens is we look at the Word of God and we say, He did that for them. That was a long time ago. That book is a good read. It's a coffee table read, but it doesn't apply to my life today. Religion sometimes leaves you short of the victory. Religion brings you into the door, but then when they teach you, sometimes they don't teach you the victorious side of it. It's kind of like this. Jesus said, I teach and speak in parables. Why? Well, parables were short stories. And that was so that the ones that were following him, his disciples, who had made a decision to trust the Lord with all of their heart, those parables was for their understanding. And he spoke to them in a way that he understood. And the things that he spoke in the parables were spiritual. And that's the problem we have today. We want to understand what Christ is doing, but we're looking in the natural and we just can't figure it out. We can't see how it works. And I'm here to tell you, every scientific study and report and man trying to play God is not going to get us out of a situation. What's going to get us out of a situation and the circumstances we're in is to hit rewind, to go back and to find out when we allowed a lie to drop into our mind, to get down into our heart, and to produce a negative harvest. See, we got to go back and we got to hit rewind because the thoughts that you have cannot just be erased the thoughts have to be replaced so you have to put new thoughts in and when you put that new thought in you say God loves me God expects me to do this or to do that he's gonna be with me and then we begin to 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 come out successful on the other side amen now, I know I'm preaching in some areas but I wanted to just make sure that that you understand the same authority that Jesus had he has given that to his children. Why? So that we can win in this game of life. And wherever you're at right now, it's not going to be found anywhere else in this world. But in your covenant, your contract, your relationship with Jesus, God the Father, being right there where you are, speaking to your heart, showing you in the word how much he loves you. And that Jesus paid the sacrifice that our country has a blessing of God upon it and every nation in the world is coming against our economy our beliefs our constitution right now why because they don't want us to be successful and the only thing that makes us successful on those stars and the blood on those flags is that God blessed this nation amen and we got to fight for it let's move on just a little bit uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verses 18 I'm gonna read a little bit more a lot of my reading is just to verify so that you hear from the Word of God exactly what I'm saying to you today Ephesians 1 verses 18 says this the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in his Saints that we that what is the uh, let me say that. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the works of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers and might and dominion. And every name that is named, not only in this age to come, but that is in that in which age is to also come. 
and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head of all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Ephesians 1, 8. That's exactly what we wanted to read to see that God has given the same authority to his children as uh, Christ Jesus had in all that he did. And I encourage you to read that. I had a pastor one time, a dear friend of mine, tell me to read that first chapter of Ephesians and to put your name in there and to personalize it and that your life will just be incredibly blessed by doing that. That was Paul, to have your understanding enlightened. Amen? What an awesome thing. So let's talk a little bit more about the authority that you and I have in Christ Jesus because I believe just like God has given us the authority in our nation to be successful he's also given us the authority to be successful in our families and in our personal lives amen there's such a parallel no matter where you want to start with it God in heaven and the dominions far above all principalities and powers all the way down to our earth that we live on that's what we see today we see a lot of people trying to to, to play God and and to do things that are just messing with what God has already orchestrated and trying to control it, trying to monetize themselves on it. And when that happens, there's a repercussion that comes out of that. But there's a repercussion for being obedient and for following the will of God for our life. And as children, that's what we want to do. God is pleased when he sees his children pushing the enemy back. See, Jesus already put the devil in his place. You and I have to also put the devil in his place until the Lord returns for us. I think too many times religiously we sit down and we just say, well, God's going to do this, and God's going to do that, and God's already told us in his word, Jesus did that, he leaves his authority with you, greater work shall you and I do, now you go do that. And that's how we walk in great greatness with God. We have the power and the authority to break the authority of the devil. We do. The devil does not have any power but that what you what you give him. If you want to give him authority in your life, if you want to take knowledge from him, you want to counsel him, he's going to give you a, a form of power. It'll be a false power because there's one that trumps that. It's the power that we have in our relationship with Jesus Christ. So don't go down that road. Go down the road of serving and loving God with all your heart. Amen? Our contact with the uh, demonic or dark sides should be with the knowledge that Jesus has already defeated him. Now listen to Colossians chapter 2 and verse 15. This is already talking about, the, about God putting him in his place. It says, having disarmed principalities and powers, principalities being evil you know, spirits that you would see, and his powers, he made a public uh, spectacle of him. Jesus made a public skeptical of the enemy and his principalities and his powers. So when people are confused and they believe a lie and they're following that road, it's our job as believers to help us to get back on course with our destiny, with our true identity, the power that overcome everything, the name above every name that every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen? So that's the power. So he made, let me read that again, Second uh, Colossians 2 and verse 15. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public skeptical of them, triumphing, triumphing over them in it. So we know that Jesus defeated the enemy. Amen? Now Jesus has dethroned them and we can reign over them. 1 John 4.4, 4, we always kind of quote that partially, but here's what it says. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Amen? 1 John 4.4. 4. So when we, when we have dethroned, when Jesus dethroned the enemy... The enemy is still allowed to operate on this earth. In fact, he has a lease on it. And when Adam and Eve fell in the garden for 6,000 years, Satan has had full run. And, and Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father after his crucifixion and after his empty grave. But I'm telling you, in these last couple 2,000 years since then, God is getting ready to come back. 
and as he comes back for his bride, will be without spot, will be without wrinkles. It is important for us to know the signs of the time. It is important for us to not be in fear. We should be rejoiceful when we see earthquakes, we see famine, we see principalities and powers trying to rule and to put God's children in bondage. God's children should rise up and begin to praise God. We see even as uh, Paul was in jail, uh, God's the angel showed up and opened the, the jail doors. And so if you feel like you've been pushed down and you're in bondage, begin to worship the Lord right where you're at. Begin to speak His Word. Begin to take authority over the enemy of your life of, that's coming against your life and put Him under your feet where He belongs. Amen? Because I'm telling you, He's a foe not to be reckoned with. He's powerless, but if He gets into your flesh and your mind and your life, He can hold you captive. And we've got to overcome that. I've got to move on quicker. How does the devil deal how how to deal with the devil? The most effective way is to pray is to demand your rights. So when we pray, we pray the word. God in his word has given us certain rights and certain privileges that we have as his children and when we pray those God is faithful and just to answer those prayers. We don't just pray to be praying to be heard. We pray specifically according to his word. Amen. So, there are demands that God has given us uh, to the rights. Let's look at uh, John 14. Uh, well, let's, let's kind of move on just a little bit because I, I have in each one of these sections, I've got a couple different passages of Scripture, and I want to make sure that uh, we keep moving for, for time's sake. So anyway, we must use our faith to win. When circumstances don't change immediately, some people become discouraged, they start to think in disbelief and they defeat themselves. That's just what I was saying a moment ago. If the enemy lies to you and you allow him to have fear in your heart, in your mind, he, he begins to get you into discouragement instead of encouragement. And we don't look at what Christ has done for us. We're trying to figure out how we're going to get out of this mess on our own. A lot of times the stuff that we get into, we can't get out of it without Christ Jesus our Lord. We need His strength. Amen? So use your faith to win. Uh, and don't talk disbelief. Don't talk uh, negative about your life and about where you're at. Begin to get into the Word of God. We must stand our ground to win. If there's ever been a time in our country and in our world that we stand, uh, we need to do that right now. So let's stand and, and have victory in our life. Amen? We must practice using the authority in every area of our life. We must recognize spiritually and mentally that Jesus gave us all authority on earth. Luke 10, verses 19, listen to this. Behold, I have given you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. That is the kind of authority that we're talking about here that Jesus has given us in our life. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 22 and 23 also says, And he put all things, who is he? Jesus. He put all things under his feet and he gave him to be the head over all things, the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Amen. I'm so glad that we have a covenant with God, that he didn't just put us into this life and expect us to figure it out that he gave us his word and that he allows us to be victorious in everything that we do spiritual authority is much like natural authority we must use what we've been given in order to get results amen they have their own wills and which uh, and which will control your circumstances so basically you have a free will and when you use that free will in the wrong in the wrong way then you're going to reap a, a, a negative harvest you're going to reach uh, reap the things that we we're talking about earlier where the enemy can defeat you and discourage you but to be victorious we have to use God's word amen and we have to operate in faith and we've got to we've got to be strong in that so although we have authority over demonic spirits and demons and principalities and powers we do not have authority over fellow men. Uh, I see that a lot of times in various ministries and various titles that you know pastors may have 
a lot of times it's human nature for men to want to control and to orchestrate the affairs. But that's the best thing about serving God is He's a loving God and He gave us authority over circumstances and things and principality and the enemy, but not over each other. We are to walk in love. And by this love, if you have love for one another, that we would know that we're Christ's disciples. And so we love one another. We can reprove, we can correct, we can use the Word of God as sound doctrine, all those things. And we can encourage one another. Even if you don't agree with somebody, it doesn't mean that you need to beat them up and spiritually quote scriptures and just sound like a, a sounding symbol. The Bible says if you have not love, all these gifts that you have are meaningless. So we don't get caught up in religious works and take authority over people. We push back on the enemy with that authority. And I just want to say that because if you don't hear that, then maybe you take this message of the authority that God's given you out of text and you try to use that in the wrong way. It doesn't work that way. You have to come to a loving God. Amen? Uh, uh, only defeat the devil in combat when we have a foundation in God's word and we act upon it. So how are we going to defeat the enemy? By acting upon his word and having a foundation in it. That's how we defeat him in our life. Amen. When we, we, we were raised with Christ to rule and reign as kings. Listen to this. Romans 5, 7, a couple scriptures, and we're getting close to our time when I'll need to pray with you. But in Romans 5, verse 7, it says this, For scarcely for a righteous man will one die yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die so we see that Jesus while we were yet sinners Jesus died for us and sometimes it feels like we're dying when we're helping others but it's not even on the same comparable side of what it means uh, for Christ to die for us but it feels like it when we're sacrificially giving but I want to encourage you if there's ever a time for us to learn about sacrificially giving and loving and walking with authority it's the day and the times that we live in right now amen first corinthians 1 verses 15 through 20 we're coming to a close here so stick with me a little bit longer if you can it says uh, he in the image of the invisible god the firstborn over all creation for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, uh, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him th uh, all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all these things he may have pre preeminence. Uh, for, it, for it pleased the Father that in him the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him, whether things on the earth or in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Amen. Man, what... It would take a long time to go through that scripture right there, those scriptures to understand uh, the authority that God has given up to his believers, you and I. And I want to encourage you that as we step out and we begin to trust God, is that we'll take every part of God, what God has given us, and we'll put it to work, and that we'll be strong. A couple more, 2 Corinthians 12. Uh, three verses right here. Let me read this because it definitely goes with what we're talking about. We're talking about we have been risen with Christ and therefore we are to reign with Christ. You've got to know that. That's our expectation. That's our earnest hope that when Christ comes back, we're going to know what's going on in this world and that we're going to reign with him. And, and, and it's going to be a joyful day. Listen to this. Second, uh, Colossians 2, verse 12 through 15. Buried with him in baptism in which we also were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead and you being dead in your trespasses and the circumcisions of your flesh he has made alive together with him having having forgiven you of all trespassing um, and having wiped out all the handwriting 
of request that was against you. He's wiped all that out that was against you, which was contrary to us. And he has taken out, taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having dis, uh, disarmed the principalities and the powers. He has made a public skeptical, skeptical, skeptical of them and triumphing over them in all. Again, we see so many times that the Word of God is using principalities, powers, and, and that tells us that the Lord is telling us we are in a battle. Just like our country's in a battle, you and I are in a battle, and that we are to take the authority that God has given us and to push back the enemy. Amen? God is good. And we're just about getting ready to be done here. I have a couple more scriptures, and then I want to pray with you today. I hope you've enjoyed this, talking about the authority of the believer. Man, it's, there's a holy boldness that rises up on the inside, at least in my spirit, that makes me want to fight for the purpose of Christ. Romans 1 says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said, if you'll deny me, I'll deny you before my heavenly Father. And when he comes back, not it, but when he comes back, I want to be in that army. I want you to be with me. I want to know what's going on, and I want to know what my orders are so that we can fight that in fight so that we can spend eternity with our Father. Amen. The church, uh, the church world has understood that Jesus Christ was the supreme head of the church. It is not understood that the head is totally dependent upon the body and his plans. And so just as Christ is the head of the church, so is a man the head of his wife and his family. All these prince, all these processes and, and, and things in life, when we learn to cooperate with them, we learn to, gov to be governed by them, our life can be at peace. We can have an anointing that comes on our life in victory. And so I want to challenge us to discern and to understand God's word, what he has done for us, what he's left for us the battle that we're in because he promises us that we will win this battle um, a couple more things the exercising of authority over the powers of the air uh, and through his body whatsoever ye shall bind on earth this is Matthew 18 18 says surely I say to you whatsoever you bind on earth uh, will be bound in heaven and whatsoever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven Man, that is a very powerful scripture. I can remember the first time I heard that. It just made me realize that in this, this warfare that I was in here, God has given me all the power of heaven and the angels and the power of prayer to come in and to manifest itself in a miracle over the situation that I might find myself in. And just like you might find yourself in today watching this telecast on this Memorial Day weekend. Amen couple more things will be done we have been given the spiritual armor and the weapons uh, over our life to be victorious I'm not going to read those Ephesians Ephesians 6 uh, it talks about so much we always quote it the helmet of salvation the breastplate of righteousness the belt of truth the feet shod with the gospel of peace uh, the sword of the spirit the shield of faith we begin to be given all of those weapons for our warfare they're mighty for God for the pulling down of strongholds amen God knew that we would be up against the enemy and that that's only for a short season before his lease is taken out and that's when Jesus returns on that white horse he comes back for you and I amen let me just read 2nd Corinthians 10 verses 3 4 and 5 for though we walk in the flesh we do not war according to the flesh you see, that tells me we're on a whole different fighting plane than how the world wants to fight. They're fighting with economy. They're fighting with plagues. They're, they're fighting with viruses. They're fighting with all kinds of things. But Jesus said, for, we walk in the uh, we, we, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, we, you and I, are to bring every thought into captivity and to make it obedient to the knowledge of Christ Jesus and the knowledge of His Word. For the Word of God is alive, it's well, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. Amen. 
man, I could go on and on. I absolutely love this. But I believed with all of my heart that when I started talking about the things about this weekend, freedom, the Constitution, America, people dying and giving their rights, uh, so their lives so that we could have rights. And then I look at our country today where we're just watered down. We're politically correct. We're walking with a sense and a form of godliness, but we're denying the power of the blood of the cross of Jesus Christ. When I see that, I, it makes my heart weep because I think about, I don't want my family members that serve to die in vain, much less the millions of soldiers that gave their life. And it would be in vain for you and I to not take the opportunity of what God has given us and to put it to use in our life to know what we believe, to know why we believe it, to begin to use the equipment that God gave us, our mind, our heart, the armor, the Word of God going forth out of our mouth, to speak into that circumstance and to say, Satan, you are no longer going to lie to me. You're going to no longer destroy my family. You've, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. I'm just here to encourage you, and I don't know what you're going through. Some of you may be lonely at the thought of, of, of our loved ones that serve and won't be with us. Some of us are just fearful to go back out and to get our businesses running. Uh, some of us don't know what our future will hold if we look in the scope of what our country, the position of our country. But I'm here to tell you we have great and an earnest hope in our relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. I love you. We love you. I want to pray with those of you right now that have just been in a place of defeat. Maybe you've spoken negative things over your life. I want to ask you to ask God to forgive you. I want to ask you to ask Jesus to come into your heart, to know that you know that you are a Christian, that you have the, the tools and the things that we talked about tonight, the authority. We see very clearly that God knows that we are in a battle. He knows that we'll be defeated. He loves you so much. He gave you a free will. He doesn't force you to choose him or his ways. He simply says, look, this is my son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He died innocent so that you and I didn't have to die. But you got to believe in him and you got to serve him. It's not good enough to have religion. We need to have relationship in our life. So if you feel that you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, will you simply pray this prayer with me right now from a pure heart? And I promise you, if you pray the sinner's prayer and you do it from a pure heart, I know that God will come into your heart. God will change those circumstances and work with you, begin to strengthen you and to help you to overcome those areas where you're deficient and things are going on and the enemy's tried to lie to you. That's what Jesus is all about loving us, helping us. He never designed for us to be oppressed. Amen. Pray this prayer for me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you right now. I've heard the word about the authority that you've given to the church and you desire to give to your children. Jesus, right now, according to your word, I ask you, to please forgive me of my sins. I believe that you are and can and will be my Savior if I ask you into my heart. Jesus, be my Lord, be my Savior, for I believe. I thank you for helping me out of all the bad situations in life. I know that by the Spirit that God raised you, Jesus, from the dead, can now dwell in my heart. Fill me with your Spirit. Help me to discern, help me to understand how to see myself the way you see me. That I might guard my mind, my heart, and that I might take authority against the enemy that has tried to come to steal, kill, and destroy. But I want your life, Father. I want life more abundantly. Thank you, God, 
for saving me. And I will serve you. Help me to be the person that you created me to be. I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. Well, I'm not real sure where, where you're at. If you prayed that prayer and you need any kind of resources, we always say this at the end of our broadcast, if you need a Bible, you need something from us, a track, something to grow, I would encourage you to become water baptized, get involved in your local church, begin to be planted with purpose and grow spiritually and develop that character, the God kind of character in your life. You can't do it alone. You ask Jesus into your heart and no matter what the circumstances are, there's nothing too hard for God. You haven't been out there so far doing so many things that God doesn't love you. He certainly loves you. We love you. Check out our website, westernharvestministries.com. If you'd like to have me come in and speak at your hometown, you can go to usao.org and look at our speakers. We'll come to a town near you. Thank you. Enjoy this Memorial Day weekend. I pray that this message really inspired you to take a stand for God and to realize you're in a battle, but you've got the tools to be victorious because Christ Jesus is in you and you've got the word and both of those things overcame the world. Amen. God loves you. We love you. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.